Today we'll be learning about the peace negotiations that bring about the end of the American Revolutionary War and result in the United States being recognized as an independent nation by Great Britain. By the end of the video, I hope that you will be able to answer the following questions. Why were Americans able to get Britain to offer them such a good deal at the end of the war? What did the Treaty of Paris give to the Americans? And what was the significance of the Treaty of Paris? You should also be able to explain the following vocab terms. John Jay, Peace Treaty, and the Treaty of Paris. So before we talk about how the Americans managed to end the Revolutionary War successfully, uh, I want to talk for a minute about how you ended wars successfully in general back in the 1700s. And the first step towards successfully ending a war was to win battles slash drag out the war until your opponent doesn't want to fight anymore. After that, after your opponent doesn't want to fight anymore, you meet with the representatives of the enemy nation. Uh, you would then tell this representative what they would have to do if they wanted the war to stop. You would basically say, like, okay, you guys have to give us this territory and this much money, otherwise we'll keep fighting the war. So if you want the war to stop, you have to give us that stuff. Uh, then you would negotiate back and forth with this guy until they were willing to give you what you wanted more or less. If they were unwilling to give you what you demanded, you could always just keep fighting the war until they came back and gave in to your demands. And the final step was to sign a treaty. And a treaty is just a legal document that makes all of these negotiations official. So once your opponent has agreed to give you what you want, both sides would sign a piece of paper saying, like, we agree to give America this territory and this much money in order to end the war. That's what a peace treaty is. And so that, those five steps, is how you would win a war back in the 1700s. And what we're going to see today is how America applies these steps in order to successfully end the Revolutionary War. The beginning of the end of the war comes about when Britain realizes that they cannot win. This happens because the war has started going really badly for them by 1781. By this time, they had lost their entire southern army in America at the Battle of Yorktown, which we learned about a few days ago. And the French, the Spanish, and the Dutch, three major European powers, had all joined the war against the British. And Britain realizes that it simply cannot afford to continue fighting against so many opponents. This means that they're willing to begin thinking about seeking peace. On top of this, the war is becoming more and more unpopular at home. The British people simply don't care that much about keeping the American colonies, and they'd rather see the war come to an end. This results in the Whig Party taking over in England. And this is the political party that uh, basically has been against the war from the beginning, and they think that free trade with an independent America is better than continuing to fight a war to keep America as a colony. Uh, all of this adds up to leading the British to discuss peace with the United States. Basically, they're ready to talk. So the British are ready to talk, and the Americans send over a couple of representatives to Paris to begin meeting with the British and talking about how to end the war. The three people that America sends are John Adams and Ben Franklin, uh, who we already know, and John Jay, who is an interesting character. John Jay was, during the war, the American diplomat to Spain. And during his time in Spain, he had come to distrust America's European allies. He especially distrusted the French because he believed that the French did not really have America's best interest in mind. Because of this, he decided that America should seek a separate peace. And what this meant is that rather than trying to sign a peace treaty with, at the same time as France and Spain and the Dutch, that America would go ahead and sign a peace treaty and get out of the war before France and Spain got out of the war. Uh, 
And basically he wanted to do this because he believed that if the Americans kept fighting, the French would sell the Americans out in order to help the Spanish. It's kind of complicated, but basically he wanted to get out of the war before the French uh, basically stabbed America in the back. And so uh, the Americans began secretly talking with the British about how to get out of the war. He also hoped that by ending the war early, the Americans could get a better deal from the British. John Adams also distrusted the French, and he once said that he thought the French leader would keep his hand under our chin to keep us from drowning, but would not lift our heads out of the water. By this, what John Adams meant was that the French were willing to help America just a little bit, but they weren't willing to really make sure that America got what was best for it in the war. The French wanted America to be independent, but they didn't want America to be strong. Anyway, I already said that last bullet point, so let's keep going. The negotiations between the American and the uh, British representatives ultimately result in the Treaty of Paris, which they sign in 1783. It's called the Treaty of Paris because they sign it in Paris. But so the treaty that results is extremely beneficial to the United States, and the British are very generous in the terms that they agree to. And here is basically what they agreed to. First, there would be peace between America and England. That is, the war stops. They stop fighting each other. Second, they would recognize America as an independent nation. Third, uh, they granted a huge chunk of territory to the United States, which stretches all the way from the Atlantic to the Mississippi. Uh, basically, the British keep what is modern-day Canada, and the Americans take what is currently the uh, eastern half of the current United States, minus Florida, which goes back to Spain. Uh, this is because Spain was helping America out, and um, basically Spain wanted to get something out of the war in the same way that uh, the Americans wanted to get something out of the war. So anyway, the Americans lose Spain, but they get this whole huge chunk up uh, that borders the Mississippi River. And uh, finally, there's going to be free trade between the Americans and the British. So even though the British just fought a war with the Americans, both sides want to continue trading with each other and uh, shipping stuff back and forth across the Atlantic. But now the British are no longer uh, allowed to regulate American trade as they had been doing during the colonial times. And so the Treaty of Paris is considered by most historians to be an extremely beneficial treaty for America. Things could have turned out differently, but America gets a really sweet deal from the British. Uh, so America is independent, that means it can run its own affairs and make its own laws. Uh, the British are no longer allowed to regulate the American economy, which allows the Americans to trade and do basically whatever they think is best, which helps the American economy to grow. America gains a ton of territory to the west, and this gives them room for expansion. That means that all the Americans, and America is growing ever more populous. Uh, all the Americans can move west into Kentucky and Tennessee and Ohio. Um, remember, they weren't allowed to do this under the British because of the Proclamation of 1763. And uh, this also turns out to be bad news for the Indians who lived on the other side of that line, but it's good news for the American economy and for Americans who want to own their own land. Um, so anyway, uh, things look really good for the United States after the Treaty of Paris. They're at peace, their economy is booming, and they've got a huge chunk of land which they can uh, go on to populate and exploit. But they're faced with the tricky problem of figuring out how to set up their new government. And that's what we're going to be talking about next chapter. Here are the goals of the video. Make sure you can answer these questions and know what these terms mean. Uh, thanks for watching the whole thing. See ya.